Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here and moving on to another two sample hypothesis testing question. So a researcher believes that students in high school A don't have as good of math teachers as high school B. They wanna test if the math marks are lower in high school A than high school B for the same curriculum. From a sample of 23 students in high school A, their average math marks and standard deviations are 30% and 9% respectively. From a sample of 28 students in high school B, the average math marks and standard deviation is 78% and 6% respectively. Assuming the population variances are unequal, at a 1% significance level, is there enough evidence supporting the researcher's claims? Now, first thing I wanna make a note of is notice how we're told population variances are unequal. So from that, we know we're gonna be doing a non-pooled variance t-test, right? So notice the population standard deviations are not given, right? We're given the sample standard deviations, not the population standard deviations. So we know that um, we're gonna be doing some kind of t-test and the fact that they said the population variances are unequal, then we're doing a non-pooled variance t-test. If they were equal, if they were assumed to be equal, then we'd be doing a pooled variance t-test like we did in the video before. So let's split this up into two populations. So the first population, let's say that's high school A. And then the second population is high school B. And we're told in high school A, there is a sample of 23 students that is gonna be tested. So that's 23 and one is 23. And their average math marks, so the sample average is uh, 73. And that sample standard deviation is nine. These are both in percentages. And then in high school B, we're told that there's a sample of 28 students that is being tested. And their average math mark, so X bar 2, is um, 78. And the sample standard deviation for population 2 is uh, 6%. Right? And then we have to test whether there's enough evidence supporting the researcher's claims. And the researcher is saying that they don't believe that students in high school A have as good of math teachers as high school B. So they're testing if the math marks here in high school A are lower than the ones in high school B. So notice that from the sample, the math marks are higher for high school B, but we have to test whether that's true or whether there's enough evidence pointing that is true for the whole population. So if we set up our null and our alternative, what we're trying to see is whether the math marks in high school A for the whole population are less than high school B, that population too. So if that's the alternative hypothesis, then the null hypothesis is gonna be this right here. So from this, we could tell we're going to be doing a left-tailed test, right? It's a one-tailed test and it's a left-tailed test, right? Because of this less than sign right there. And since we're doing a non-pooled variance t-test, we know that we are going to be working with a t-distribution. And since we're doing a left tail test, then we know there's only going to be one critical value. It's going to be over here. Right? And then this area here is 1%. We were told in the question that it was a 1% significance level. So then this area over here is 99%. So this area, it's the critical region or uh, the rejection region where we're going to reject the null. And then over here, this is the acceptance region where we're gonna accept the null, right? So we gotta first find out what's this critical value here, and then we gotta figure out what the test statistic is, and then where is it gonna fall on this diagram. Now, if you remember for a pooled variance t-test, we had a formula for the degrees of freedom, 
it was n1 plus n2 minus 2. But unfortunately, for a non-pooled variance t-test, the formula is different. And the formula is actually right here. Right, so the degrees of freedom is basically equal to all of this. And we can just basically plug in. Uh, we're not even going to be using the sample averages. Notice that this whole formula, it's all based on the sample sizes and the sample standard deviations. So starting with the um, numerator here, we would take 9 squared all over that sample size of 23 plus the sample size of 2 squared, which would be 6 squared, all over the sample size 28, and then we square that whole expression, and it's going to be all over the uh, sample standard deviation of 1 to the power of 4 over the sample size squared, so 23 squared, times 23 minus 1. And then same thing here, plus 6 to the power of 4, right? The sample standard deviation of population 2 to the power of 4, all over the uh, population 2 sample size squared times that sample size minus 1, right? So a pretty big calculation right there. And when you do that calculation, you should end up getting 36.9797. So that is the degrees of freedom of the T distribution that you are working with to get that critical value. So you can maybe round this up to 37, degrees of freedom is 37, and you're looking for the critical value with 99% on the right and 1% on the left. So with a non-pooled variance t-test, getting that degrees of freedom manually, it's, uh, it's a bit of work. It's a lot more work than a pooled variance t-test. And if you want to get that critical value with the calculator instead, if you want to plug in this as a decimal, since you can't really look up a decimal of degrees of freedom on the table, go to stat, uh, distribution, t-distribution, inverse t, and then here you would put data variable, the area is always the right-tailed area. So in this case, it's 99%, so 0.99. And then you would input 36.9797 for the degrees of freedom right there. And when you execute that, you would get negative 2.43. And so that there is the critical value that we are working with. And it's only one critical value since we're doing a one-tailed, left-tailed test. And then the only thing that is left to do is to find out what that t-test statistic is going to be, which is a different formula for non-pooled variance t-test versus a pooled variance t-test. And then once we get that test statistic, see where it falls on the diagram. And the formula for the t-test statistic for non-pooled variance t-test is this right here. It's actually very similar to the formula for the um, Z test statistic, right? When the population standard deviations were known, except instead of the population standard deviations here, or the population variances, since we're squaring it, you put the sample standard deviations instead. So what you would have, you'd have uh, X1 minus X2, so 73 minus 78 in that numerator all over the square root of S1 squared, so 9 squared over 23 plus 6 squared over uh, 28. All right, plug it all in the formula. When you do all of that in your calculator, you would end up getting negative 2.28. So that is the um, test statistic. And where does that fall over here? Well, notice negative 2.28 is like over here. So notice it's in that acceptance region. So what happens is that we fail to reject the null, right? And what the alternative hypothesis was, what we were testing for 
was that the marks in high school A, the math marks in high school A, are lower than the math marks in high school B. So what this means is that there's not enough evidence that math marks are lower. in high school A versus high school B, right? So if we got a test statistic somewhere here, we'd be rejecting this null hypothesis and there would be evidence pointing towards the alternative hypothesis. There would be evidence that the math marks are lower in uh, high school A. But uh, even though in the sample they're lower, it's still not enough evidence. Something's going on. Maybe the sample size isn't big enough or um, something with the sample standard deviations. Whatever it is, the conclusion is that this here isn't enough evidence to prove that for the whole population, for the whole high school, that high school A's math marks are lower than high school B's. And if you were to do this whole test with a calculator, got STAT F3 for test, we're doing a t-test and we're doing it for two samples you get to this input screen here. So data would be variable. This here is always the alternative hypothesis. So we got the less than sign. So this is less than mu2. X1 is 73, S1 is 9, 23, 78, 6, and then 28. And then this pooled here, it's off. You gotta make sure it says off because it's a non-pooled variance t-test. Remember when we did a pooled variance t-test when the variances are assumed to be equal, then this is, uh, the pooled button is on, but because it's a non-pooled variance t-test, the variances are assumed to be unequal, then you gotta make sure that it's off here. So that's the difference with the calculator. That's pretty much the only difference with the calculator when you're doing a non-pooled versus a pooled variance t-test, basically just that input right there. And when you execute all that, you would get this output here. You're gonna get a bunch of stuff. They're gonna list out some of these variables here, but the three you wanna look at are these three. So the first one, it's the test statistic, which we actually found before, negative 2.28. So notice we got the same thing p-value gives you the p-value 0.014. How does the p-value compare to the significance level? Well, notice that the p-value in this case is greater than that significance level of 1%. And when the p-value is greater than the significance level, we know that we fail to reject the null or we continue to accept the null. So we got the same conclusion, whether we're looking at the test statistic, comparing it to the critical value, or we're just looking at the p-value and comparing it to the significance level. And then also notice how the calculator gives you the degrees of freedom, which is exactly the same as the degrees of freedom that we got when we did it manually with the, uh, with the formula, right? So doing, doing it with the uh, calculator a lot easier you come to the same conclusion, but uh, as usual, I like to show it manually first just to increase your understanding of how to actually use the calculator.